Hi everybody, welcome back to Rainbow Acrylics. My name's Claire. The painting I'm about to show you, it started out as a commission. I had a, I've got a lovely friend who wanted a cookie monster embellished on a painting. So that was my plan. So if I refer to the cookie monster, that, that was what my plan was. But I didn't, I, I produced a canvas which I was really happy with, but not for the intended purpose and not for the, for the embellishment I wanted to do. So I then changed it. So I then, inspired by Veronica Me, um, I have then um, done some um, embellishing, created some depth and created this really cool looking basket weave effect on the canvas. Um, so I'll show you the full, it's a full flip cup, I'll show you the full um, pour but then my plan changes and I embellish it with a, a really, really cool, funky 3D effect. I did a pour about a week ago with a 3D effect. Not sure if it worked. This one I really think does work. Um, so let me show you. These are the colours I'm going to mix up. So I've got some Montmartre white, Amsterdam phthalo blue, Amsterdam manganese blue phthalo, Royal and Langnickel cerulean blue, De La Rowney Graduate Acrylic Metallic Blue and Pebio Studio Acrylics Iridescent Blue Green. So I've got two metallics in here. Um, and But you can see that these four colours are all quite similar. So I'm hoping that the turquoise and the little bit of white will just mix things up. So I'm going to mix them um, with PVA glue and um, water pouring medium. Um, and I'm going to mix them three parts pouring medium to two parts paint. I'll put the recipe of what I'm going to use in the description of this video. I've just added some oil into all my colours. So this is coconut, moisturising coconut milk hair serum. And it's made by a company, I think called OGX. Not sure. I think if you can see the logo just there, that's the company that makes it. Um, I've added a couple of drops of that into each colour. So that's what will create the cells. Let me show you the consistency. So it's thick, but it's smooth. So it leaves a bit of a trace. I hope you can see that. It does leave a little bit of a trace, but not too, for too long. And I, I don't want it too thick because I want it to be able to flow nicely on the canvas. So first thing to do is just to layer up a cup. Um, so they're reasonably thick. So I'm just going to be drizzling the colours in layers on, on top of each other. Maybe slightly less white, I think. That is way too thick. As I'm starting to pour it, I can feel that it's just not pouring out the cup well enough. So I'm just gonna add some more of my pouring medium. I put my pouring medium, I mix it in this massive fabric um, softener bottle because then it just, it lasts, it can make up a big quantity that's gonna last a nice long time. As long as the lid's on, it's airtight, so it will last. Yeah, see that that flew that just flowed a lot better then. I'm using a 30 by 40 centimeter canvas. So as I said, it's a flip cup. So I'm literally just going to turn this cup upside down, flip it upside down onto this canvas. Um, I can either just turn it or I could go like that so I, I just don't risk spilling it all quite as much so I'm just going to give that a moment I'm just going to sort of burp it let the air come out um, in fact it's all coming out anyway okay I'm just going to tip it over wow what fab colours and then I'm just going to let that drain. I'll be tilting this off, but it's good if you've got any extra just to wet the canvas with. So the white is really reactive there. I've got some really pretty white cells there. 
Right, my idea or my aim for this is to tilt first, then torch, because I think I'd rather have smaller cells in this to create a little bit more detail. And then torch afterwards. So lots of air bubbles in it at the moment. I'm not happy so the reason I'm not happy I love this section this section is totally dominated by cerulean blue I think I shouldn't have put the cerulean blue in it's totally dominated and this for some reason the cells aren't really coming through there very well I much prefer this section where you've got the much higher contrast Just not happy. I think I'm going to do this again, but leave out the cerulean blue. Unfortunately, I don't have enough paint, so I'm just going to mix up some more paint, but leave out that blue. So I've mixed up another cup of paint. So this time with just the four colours, the dark blue, the metallic blue, the lighter Amsterdam blue, and then the white. I'm going to pour straight onto this. So I'm going to flip right over, right into the centre. So obviously there's a lot of paint on here already, but that is now going to act like a flow extender for this puddle. So I won't use a corner catcher. I would just let it all fall off over the edges. It will be quite a lot of wasted paint. So what I will do is scrape it up and keep it for another pour. So it won't actually be wasted. In fact, I will probably I won't won't put all the uh, the dregs out this time because I will use that cup um, to put the the scraped paint back into. Right just feel happier already because I can see the different layers of blues there. So I'm, I'm really hopeful that by torching now, I'm gonna get a lot of really pretty cells. There's still a lot of paint on there. So I'm gonna to torch, but then I might, I might tilt again. We'll see what happens. I don't like that white bit there at all. So I'll probably, unless I get rid of that bit now. Actually, no, that doesn't matter because that will be covered up because of the embellishment. So let's see what happens. Let's now give this a bit of a tilt. There's some bits I don't like, but unfortunately those bits are right in the center, like the big cells. So I don't like this cell here, so that one definitely can go. This was a normal flip cup this would be overstretched but i stretched and stretched and stretched it because the bit that i really loved was this bit here and this isn't overstretched at all the cells are absolutely beautiful it's stretched over at this far edge but that is going to be covered up so the whole time i was um tilting this i had to keep in mind what this paint what this is for so this is for I, I only going to really want the central part that's going to be shown. So the edges do, don't matter. This little splodge here, I think that will get covered up. The, but, and also the more I stretch those massive blue cells, the colours appeared within them. So actually they're not solid blue anymore. So really happy with that. 
Um, this section's a little bit too white. Maybe I should have done a slightly thinner layer of white. But again, it's going, it's going, a lot of it's going to be covered up. So it really doesn't matter. Um, this up here is absolutely beautiful. There's a very soft blue in there. And I've realised it's actually the metallic one, the iridescent one. Um, so I think this is going to be perfect for, for what I want. There's enough variation, there's enough contrast um, to hopefully create quite an interesting background for this piece. So the painting's now dry. I'm really happy with it, but not for the purpose that it's intended. Um, oh, sorry, it's a bit of a shadow. Um, these cells are gorgeous. They're jam-packed. It's really, really busy. I, I, I really love it. But I just think for an embellishment of a single character, um, of a cookie monster it's just not going to work because you've got this massive white patch you've got this massive blue patch i think it needs to be more even throughout the whole painting for the cookie monster piece so i'm changing my plan totally i am going to embellish it with some 3d art i follow um a lovely artist on youtube called veronica me she does these amazing pours where she tapes off part of the canvas shades it in and creates this amazing 3D effect. Um, so that is what I'm gonna do. Put lots of frog tape on, do lots of shading, and hopefully create a real 3D illusion. So can you see it? Can you see the 3D? Can you see that it hopefully looks like, almost like a woven basket? I see it much more obviously from further back. Um, the closer I get, the less obvious it is to me. But you say you've got, you've got lines going vertically, vertically lines going horizontally that just all um, sort of twine and weave together. Um, I showed my husband and said, can you see it? And he looked for a moment and then he said, yes, I can. He said, 
you can't see it to start with, but once you see it, you can't unsee it. <laughs> so once you see the 3D effect, you can't go back, you can't unsee it. Although it just takes a moment, I think, for you to see. Um, so if you look really up close, um, you just see lots of slightly scruffy painted lines. Um, so really up close, it it's really I think what happens is the white stands out too much so it just looks like lots and lots of rectangular boxes with little white squares in between them but then actually it's the white that as you as you come back it almost looks like holes in it and then you can see that 3d effect love how it just it goes over the edges um all around i managed to get it really quite symmetrical so um there's the little white boxes along all four of the edges um i'm really really happy with it it's so different it took me quite a long time it's not a quick embellishment at all but pretty satisfying because you're just being guided by the straight lines of the frog tape the whole time so a pretty easy time time consuming and a little bit frustrating but really pretty effective, um, pretty easy to do really. Um, so yeah, really happy. Not sure where, what I'll do next, where I'll go with this next, if I'll do another sort of um, um, 3D effects one. But yeah, if you've got any ideas, do let me know. Great, thank you so much for watching. Please do give it a thumbs up if you like it. And if you can see that, that um, 3D effect. Great, take care everyone. Bye.